All right, we are back with a Friday edition of the Osceola Seminole Sidelines. My name is Pat Burnham. I'm an Osceola football analyst and recruiting analyst, and I'm joined by Osceola recruiting analyst Charles Fishbein. Uh, Fish, welcome to our Friday hey. show. Uh, we're glad we caught Fish on a Friday because he is not at a college or high school football camp, uh, which is a rarity. But uh, Fish obviously uh, continues to be a busy time, uh, as it will be the entire until June 25th, uh, when the calendar goes dead again for Florida State and recruiting in general. Um, obviously, they've had some camps this week. We saw four offers go out from the, uh, the prospects from State of Washington who camped here earlier this week. Uh, but uh, really, the big news is. They had two official visitors here for midweek visits, and they bring in six this weekend, uh, which we're going to talk about. And obviously, uh, there's some news on offensive line target Derek Plaz, who had committed to Penn State. So we're going to get into all of that. But uh, we want to thank everyone for watching us uh, and uh, being a part of the Osceola Seminole sidelines as we preview Florida State's big weekend. Let's start with what happened this week. And they had uh, both – safety prospect or corner prospect Jameer Grimsley and Kai Bates in town and uh, Kai uh, Bates wrapped up his visit um, Wednesday or Thursday uh, and was basically blown out of the water by FSU's visit. He had said coming to his visit fish that he had been to Alabama the week before that they had set the bar for official visits. It certainly seems that Florida State has matched whatever Alabama did on its official visit. And, of course, uh, still some work to go. Um, he's got OVs, or official visits at Tennessee and LSU ahead. But, uh, you know, Kai Bates seemed to really enjoy his time in Tallahassee. And uh, Just your thoughts on Kai as a prospect. Yeah, I think he's I, – I would compare him to, like, Xavier Rhodes coming out of high school. Very good athlete. He's, he's a guy that um, was not highly regarded last year. He was a good player, and he went to some camps and stuff this year and kind of blew up. Uh, kind of like Xavier Rose. Xavier is one of those guys that was a wide receiver in high school and really didn't do a whole lot. And then all of a sudden, his senior year, um, got recruited Florida State, landed him, converted him to, from wide receiver to uh, corner. I think Kai's kind of the similar type of kid. Uh, he's going to probably be converted more to a safety at the next level. Um, he does play some corner now, but he's he's an approved player. And... Um, He's getting recruited by everybody in the country. So, yeah, and uh, you know, listen, he, you know, he said he was a, kind of surprised by the fact that he was blown away. Uh, th his comments were, "The visit was exciting. They opened my eyes a lot. Really, I got more than I expected coming here." Uh, he goes, "I've just been on an official visit. My first official visit was at Alabama, but just, but coming here just blew, really blew it out of the water for me. I'm a big people person. Seeing everybody and how they react." with each other is big for me. So obviously he went on to say a lot of good things about Mike Norvell, which most of the kids do. They talk about what a down to earth guy he is. And uh, obviously how open and honest he is with them on their visit. Uh, obviously, you know, fish mothers are a big factor in their kids recruitments. His mother had a good time on the trip, which I think helped Florida state. Uh, and of course, listen, uh, you know, He's come out of two official visits, and both of them have been his best official visit, right? Uh, so I thought it was very telling that he said, listen, I'm going to go back and sit down and think about these all these visits. I'm not going to make an emotional decision. Uh, so he's not going to come. Basically, what I took that to infer is that he's not going to come out of an official visit and commit to somebody right then and there. He's going to take these official visits uh, – to Tennessee, LSU, then come back and, you know, listen, he can go official visits in the fall if he wants, but I think he's going to kind of, I think he's going to take stock of everything after these official visits are over, then kind of come on, come away with a decision. How do you read into his comments? I mean, listen, we've talked about this before and spoken about it is that uh, once a kid's on campus at Florida state and they get to see uh, what Florida state's like, it's a program, a school, uh, what the school has to offer. I think they have a shot at any kid once they get them on campus. Um, it's It sells itself, the program, the history, everything about Florida State. I think most kids are going to enjoy the visit. So it's not shocking that he came on the visit and enjoyed himself. It's getting them on those visits. We've discussed that. If you could get them on and then you get them on campus multiple times, uh, then you really have a legit shot. Edgewater has been pro Florida State, we've talked about this programs, high school programs do 
uh, favor schools, and Florida State has done well. You could go back to, I think, Aaron Jones, Matt Hardrick, um, Kenny Ingram. Uh, they've had guys uh, after that, I believe, from Edgewater. So it's a school that they've gone in and recruited well, uh, and they got, I, I believe they have a legit shot after you listen to what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I really like him. I look I like his film. I mean, you know, all these DBs look good backpedal. But I really like the way he can backpedal up and up his hips and run. And uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. But uh, certainly a guy that seems self-aware knows that he's going to be fired up each and every time he comes out of an official visit. But I think it says a lot about what Florida State does on these visits that, you know, they seem to have at least equaled what he felt like coming out of Alabama, if not surpassed it. So uh, we'll see how things shake out with Kai after his visits to Tennessee and LSU. The other uh, prospect that was in on a official, uh, I mean, an official visit midweek was Jameer Grimsley from, really from Bloomingdale, but he's going to play at Tampa Catholic this year. He's uh, he play, transferred from Bloomingdale to Tampa Catholic this spring. Uh, let's, uh, the one thing coming out of that fish, you and I have talked about where do you play Jamar, uh, who is Jameer, who's listed as a. Um, athlete is he a receiver is he a corner is he a safety uh now he said after his visit that florida state is definitively recruiting him as a cornerback prospect and that's what he wants to play do you think that's a a place you would start him or do you think that's a place that 63 185 he ultimately outgrows or is he that fluid yeah, I mean, as an athlete that the, he can play there yeah the one thing you'll look if you watch his film he's got great feet um he's able to you know, kind of manipulate defenders with his ability to run route. I mean, he's a very good route runner. You see when he comes off the ball and even when you teach these kids, you want them to almost, they, you want to get defenders off balance. And he does a very good job with his little uh, jab steps and his, his route running. So he has quick feet. That's the one thing you want on a defensive back, especially a corner guys. If they're taller, you want them to be able to be fluid and they have to have quick feet because they're going to have to adjust to wide receivers routes. He has the ability to do that. So the height is not hurting him where, you know, as well as I do, a lot of taller corners struggle covering uh, mainly because they're just not fluid. They don't have the footwork. They don't have the ability to change direction. We watched a kid, you know, a couple weeks ago, but that both of us were like, wait a second, where are you going to play that it's kid? He plays wide receiver and DB and really doesn't have a position. I think this kid, you could basically put him anywhere on the field. That's what how good of an athlete he is. He's a very good receiver. You watch his film as a receiver. He can really, uh, you know, get open, and, and he has very good speed. He's very rangy. I think he could play like four positions. I don't think he's stuck at wide receiver. I think he could play corner. He could play free safety. Um, you, you see his range and his ability to cover a lot of ground. He's very athletic. Uh, he'd be a very good get for them. Uh, I think this kid's kind of under the radar, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I was going to say, the more I wa I went back and watched his film again last night, the more I watch his film, the more I like him. and I can see why they're intrigued by him. Uh, listen, his com a couple of his comments after his visit when we spoke to him, uh, they see me as a true corner. That's my preference. I think I can play corner, and I don't see that not working out. I'm confident in my ability. Uh, about He's already visited North Carolina and Penn State, has visits to Alabama and Michigan later this month. When it comes to visits, he said, getting those visits out of the way has helped me with the decision process. I'm starting to eliminate schools, not because they are bad schools or anything. I'm just starting to choose the better school for me. I'm starting to know what questions to ask, which is something these kids start to learn as they take more and more of these visits. Uh, and as far as uh, what he said about Mike Norvell and FSU, he's very passionate. I like the coaches that they're going, they are going to push you. Sometimes you can't always push yourself as hard as you need to. They really want me to be a part of this team. I can feel it. Uh, he did say that he does plan to announce his commitment on August 18th. He indicated that Florida State was in his top three after the visit. He did not say who the other two teams were. Uh, what we do know is right now he has OVs, uh, official visits, scheduled to Alabama and Michigan yet to come. So uh, it's, and uh, he was very uh, 
see mature beyond his years and his interviews. I do think this is another kid that will not let emotion uh, make the decision. And I think that's another reason why he's waiting until August. But certainly, uh, listen, I think he's a guy with his fish, with his visits, uh, a guy that uh, I think, like you, a lot of these college coaches are intrigued by him because of his size and his athletic ability. He is very fluid. He runs very fast uh, and makes – he's got great ball skills, whether he's playing receiver or DB. So, uh, I mean, you look at the schools that are recruiting him. I mean, Michigan had a very good year last year producing um, – defensive backs in the draft Penn State uh, has done a very good job there and you know what Alabama could do so when you start to look at the schools that are recruiting these kids and you look at the evaluations that Norvell and his staff have been doing you start to feel very comfortable with a lot of these kids that they're recruiting that maybe they are undervalued and you can't always look at the star rating uh, on some of these kids but he has elite. He has he has some elite skill sets. I, I mean, you go watch. I'm watching some of his clips while we're talking right now. He's very quick feet. Um, he's he, he's not afraid to come up and hit you. No, he's physical. Yeah, you watch. He has all the traits uh, to be a very good football player on either side of the ball. I don't think he's locked into one position. I think this is a guy that honestly, if you ran out of numbers at receiver, you could always move him to the offensive side of the ball and play him as a receiver. So I like this kid a lot. He'd be a very good get for them. Uh, I think Florida State would uh, benefit from players like this on their roster. Well, we know. Listen, he's a versatile athlete. Uh, they'll tell him what he could grow into if he could not play corner for whatever reason. Uh, but certainly sounds like that's where they're going to start him at if you were to end up in Florida State. All right, so one other bit of housekeeping from earlier this week, or actually yesterday, uh, two weeks ago, Derek Plaz, the offensive tackle from Jacksonville, Andrew Jackson, went to Penn State on his official visit. He had named Florida State in his top five prior to that visit, had not set an official visit with Florida State at that time, committed to Penn State on his visit last night, decommitted from Penn State, and it sounds like it is a solid decommitment the way he worded it in his uh, Twitter post to Penn State. Uh, that he that it was not only he was decommitting that he was moving on. So I, I inferred to his comments, but uh, has not the good the news here is he has decommitted from Florida State, but or uh, Penn State, but has not set up an official visit with Florida State yet. He was at Big Man Camp uh, a week and a half ago. Fish. He did spend some time with Alex Atkins and other coaches on the staff. Uh, so we will keep you guys updated um, if we get any updates on Derek. Actually committing to a official visit here, but fish any thoughts on Derek Plaza's decommitment, what it can mean for Florida state. It should. I, I had no idea he even committed to Penn state. I mean, these kids. Hey, uh, there's they, a lot going on. It in just, recruiting right no, now. It's just like, you know, it's, it's hard to follow uh, these kids that they commit, they decommit. They, they, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't envy these coaches at what they got to deal with, with these prospects. Uh, kids don't really know what a commitment means. I, I really don't understand why they just don't, um, you know, hold off. And, and then once they decide, hey, I'm going to shut it down, especially now they got so many opportunities to visit all these schools. You could take freaking 10 official visits and be, basically be like, oh, man, I'm tired of this. Let me shut it down. I'm going to commit. I'm going to stay solid at the school. But Derek's uh, an intriguing prospect. I don't think he's an elite level prospect, but once again, we talk about this. Does he have elite level skills? He's a big kid that can move. He's athletic. Um, he does have to get bigger and stronger, which is normal for a high school offensive lineman. He's not going to. He's not a ready-made prospect, but he's very similar to the guys Florida State's been recruiting the last few years out of high school. That I think that they are looking for more guys that have upside and potential them more than finished product where they can kind of they lean on the portal more for that uh where they could get some of these guys they're going to be able to build some depth on the back end once these portal kids um leave after this year i think they have like three or four guys on the offensive line that are going to be leaving so these guys that they've been developing the last two years uh, they had a big o-line class two years ago these are the same type of players that Derek plaza you can get and you just hope um that you could get them through uh, the development stage quicker. Uh, he has a lot of potential. Like I said, he's a big, long, athletic kid that can do a lot of things, moves well laterally, uh, can bend. He can, he can redirect. Uh, he can change direction as far as 
when a pass rusher goes up the field and gets some pressure on him, he could come back inside if the uh, pass rusher makes a move. So he has the tools to be very good two years from now. Uh, if the patience is there and uh, the kid's willing to develop, I think he's a guy that could eventually be a starter down the road and an all-conference type player uh, along the offensive line. Yeah, yeah, I really like this film. He's, he's a very bright kid, very uh, pragmatic kid. The way he talks, uh, we, we, you and I spoke with him for a while uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we'll see what happens with Florida State. But we will keep you guys updated on any news as far as Derek Plaz scheduling an official visit with Florida State, and that is a perfect segue into this weekend's official visits with uh, a group that includes Charles Lester, Kevin Levy, Ricky Knight, Xavier Mincy. Alex January, and, of course, B.J. Gibson. And we'll start with B.J. Fish. B.J. is probably about as uh, committed as you could get. He's uh, the, he's a wide receiver, defensive back from Wilcox County, Georgia, committed to Florida State on April 14th, the, uh, the weekend of the spring game. Seems to be as locked in as they come. He did go on an official visit to Stanford on the weekend of June the 2nd, uh, as far as I know it to be. Uh, he does not have any other official visits planned at this time, but uh, he did participate in Florida State's elite camp this past weekend. Got a chance to work with Luke Cromanhawk and was very impressive in uh, the, the Seminoles' elite camp. But uh, again, another versatile product that, if he had to, could probably play on either side of the ball. And of course, he does plan to play baseball at Florida State. So uh, uh, another tremendous athlete. But just your thoughts on BJ uh, and as a player and where. Florida State stands with them because uh, they, they look really solid. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of BJ. Kind of reminds me of an old Seminole that I, when I first got in the business, I covered is uh, Preston Parker. Preston was very similar, um, was one of those guys that you saw when he was at Florida State. He played wide receiver. Then in the Maryland game, FSU ran out of running backs. They were able to line him up at running back. I think he ran for 150 yards. BJ, and Preston could have played safety in college as well. BJ is one of those guys that could play anywhere on the field, uh, any of the skill positions. He just he looks very good on film. Uh, I've heard him get interviewed. I like the way this kid uh, talks. He, he's you could tell he's got a high football IQ. He's a kid that's going to be able to pick up the game very quickly at Florida State, and he seems like a great kid. Uh, the few, the times I've seen him interviewed, he's just very uh, you know he's you could see he always has a smile on his face. He just seems like a great kid and. These are the type of kids you want to bring into your program that have that upside. I think they stole a kid uh, from BJ um, and BJ Gibson. So I think Florida State got a very good player in this kid. Yeah, you mean stolen from Georgia? Yeah, the state of Georgia, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, listen, they've, they've had a lot of success in Georgia with this recruiting class. They're taking some of the best players in the state when you look at Croman Hawk, Thomas, and Cam Davis to go along with B.J. Gibson, and I think I'm missing the safety the uh, safety that they've got committed out of Georgia. So you got at least five players committed to this class out of Georgia. All right, uh, Fish, I know you really like this guy. Uh, Charles Lester uh, will be in town this weekend. Charles Lester the third. Uh, he's one of the most highly sought-after cornerback prospects in the country. Uh, was at um, Colorado this past weekend for an official visit. Uh, prior to that visit, uh, you know, and still may be the case, that's why I'm going to ask you this question. Florida State seemed to be uh, the leader in his recruiting process. Um, you know, as you well know, Colorado is uh, uh, they're one of Dion's mantras is we're coming. And uh, Charles did finish, send out a kind of a cryptic tweet during his uh, visit to Colorado that I'm coming, uh, which you could infer that he's going to Colorado. Now, it could have just been a thing to do. They were taking a lot of pictures. But uh, he has uh, also taken an official visit to Alabama during the first week of June. Uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts uh, on uh, Charles Lester at this point in his recruitment? Who else is involved besides Colorado and Alabama? Yeah, you know, I know Florida State fans have a little PTSD or whatever from, uh, you know, the whole Travis Hunter situation in Colorado. I, I just, you know, Lester has been a Florida State fan his entire life. This kid's been on campus a lot of times. He's coming back again on another visit. It's hard to change those kids. I'm not saying Dion can't. I mean, you look, forget, forget uh, Dion. Look at the other schools, Bama and Georgia. These guys have histories of developing corners and defensive backs in general. 
and you don't see those schools listed at the top. You've seen Florida State listed at the top as a leader all along. Um, I would be I, nothing shocks you anymore in recruiting, but I'd be surprised on this one. I, I I felt like Florida State's been in the clubhouse for a while. I think that this visit should solidify it. Um, the only thing that's bothersome is this kid should have been committed already. You would have thought with as much as he likes FSU that he would have pulled the trigger. So you want to get this one out of the way. I think he's one of those guys you want him to get committed uh, before the summer's out. If you start to go into the season, then you start to get concerned because um, of when you have such a lead on a kid like this, you want to get it over with. Now he does have Georgia on uh, the weekend of June 23rd. Do you think there's any way that he would uh, commit to Florida State before going on that visit? No, I think he'll wait till it, all his visits are done. But like I said, it, it, you want to see this kid in the boat by July 1st or, you know, uh, the first week of July um, if you're Florida State. If no, he starts to drag his recruitment on longer, he, I mean, that's what happened with Travis Hunter. I mean, he was committed, but the more that – Colorado and these other schools stayed in the picture and you heard, you know, they start taking visits, you know, during the season of these schools, they could take them unofficially to these schools. You don't want them to start taking visits in the fall after they're committed to Florida state. You want this kid to shut it down and uh, be solid to the Seminoles. Yeah. Well, if Lester is not number one on their board or near the top. Another kid that uh, is near the top of Florida State's recruiting board at cornerback is Ricky Knight the third from Benjamin School in Palm Beach Gardens. Um, Fish, uh, FSU, and Miami are thought to be the top two teams involved with him. Florida State was the first school to offer him, which he actually spoke about. We did an article uh, with him coming into this visit uh, where he said for Florida State to be the first program to believe him, he says a lot. I had no stars, no name for myself, and yet they still took a chance on me. That says a lot about who they are as coaches and programs. Uh, you know, he's also been – he was at Illinois. Uh, Illinois and Penn State are also involved. He took an official visit to Illinois this past weekend. Of course, their selling point is they had a first-round draft pick. Uh, he mentions that in the uh, – in his uh, when he talked to us about Illinois. Uh, obviously, Miami is right in his backyard. Uh, and he's impressed with what they are building there, trying to build. What are your thoughts on Ricky Knight, uh, not only as a prospect, but also as a uh, uh, where he stands with Florida State on their board and where Florida State stands with him? Yeah, Ricky's one of those kids that uh, basically every visit he visited that school, they were kind of like a favorite after the visit. I know Florida State got on him first. Um, they liked him a lot. This is a kid I saw early in the process earlier this spring very impressive got great feet when you talk and you start talking about these bigger corners you want them to be more fluid that's the as guys get taller they're less fluid they're not able to change direction he basically shut everybody down and, and i know it was a seven on seven event but he was going against elite receivers at the event and that was impressive to me his feet his ability to change direction um very fluid kid. You know, all the terms that you want to use for a top end corner. He had those traits, uh, has the confidence. And once again, we speak about the schools that are recruiting them. When you talk about Illinois, they had a lot of success last year. Their secondary was one of the best in college football. Uh, they had the Devon Witherspoon kid drafted in the first round. They had other defensive backs drafted. And I think they had like three or four guys drafted overall. So Brett Belima has done a great job there with their uh, defensive backs in general, but you look at Penn state, once again, another school that's had a lot of success. So you like these guys. I'm a big fan of Ricky Knight. He's another guy I think that could help their secondary. Uh, and he'll be a very productive player. He's another guy that you don't have to just play him on the outside. He may be a slot corner. He may be able to play on the outside. Um, his ability to play multiple positions. He may be able to even play some free safety. He's a kid. I think is going to get bigger, stronger and faster too as well once he gets into college yeah he's got a good relationship with coach norvell uh he's talked about him in our little interview leading up to his official visit and if you'd like to read that uh interview with ricky knight uh, prior to his visit to florida state which he will be starting in about two hours you can go to the osceola.com or floridastate.rivals.com uh check us out we have uh 
video and written interviews with both Jameer Grimsley and Kai Bates as they left. And we have a preview with uh, myself, Fish, and Lee Wardlaw wrote for uh, Wardlaw wrote for this weekend's official visit. So there'll be some uh, comments from that kid. But we did we do have a Ricky Knight pre official visit article at theosceola.com or floridastate.rivals.com. Uh, another kid that uh, – another corner slash safety, which they're, they've got a ton – this will be the six, the, about the sixth guy, six DB this week when you take in the midweek visits. But Kevin Levy, uh, Fish, you always say uh, don't listen to what they say, watch what they do and where they go. Uh, and this is a kid that not only has been in Tallahassee, I believe, three times on unofficial visits this year, but was here back-to-back weekends in uh, April. I, I think this is a kid that would jump all over a committable offer. Uh, he's, uh, as you put, he's a two-way player, just like B.J. Gibson, LeWayne McCoy. Uh, he can play receiver, safety, or corner. You like his size and length and his speed. Uh, there's a lot you like about him. He's also be, he's also taking official visits to Rutgers and Louisville. He will go to Illinois. We keep on hearing Illinois a lot uh, with these DBs. Uh, obviously, Aaron Henry is their DB coach there, and obviously from the state of Florida. Uh, so they are really working Florida hard. But uh, I think this is a kid that would come to Florida State right now. Uh, what are your thoughts on Le- Levy? It's good to have guys that are really good football players that want to come because that allows you to set the board that if you miss on a Charles Lester or even a Ricky Knight, that when you go down to a kid to this level, there's not a whole lot of drop off. Uh, you don't want to have a plan A and then not have a plan B and you land plan C. That's how you get your, yourself in trouble at positions uh, on roster management and how you uh, solve problems. But this is a kid that comes up, he'll hit you. Uh, another one with a, a lot of range, uh, can play outside, can play inside. Uh, play slot corner um, goes up and he actually has pretty decent hands. So he's not one of these DBs that's going to drop picks. Cardinal Newman's a school that's going to, that they had some guys at the um, FAU camp, a very talented uh, football program that Jack Daniels has built there. Uh, they're a school, I think with a lot levy won't be the only one that they're recruiting out of this high school the next two years. Yeah, well, well, they're they're really working South Florida hard. There's no doubt about that. All right, and our fourth and I think final defensive back on an official visit this weekend is going to be Xavier Mincy from Daytona Beach Mainland High School, another big corner fish. We like him as a safety, 6'3", 190. Um, he has uh, took it. He took an official visit to Florida this weekend. This past weekend was at Alabama on an unofficial the weekend before that. Has a, an official visit to Miami on the weekend of June 23rd. Um, the one note, I, you know, listen, I don't know if that matters, but his uh, the athletic director at his high school is former FSU receiver Terrence Anthony. I think he does work with the football program as well. I don't know if that gives Florida State a inside track, but I think this is a guy that you feel like another in-state school is leading on. So just – Talk to us a little bit about your thoughts on Xavier Mincy. I mean, physically, Xavier, I, you have him down, I think, at six foot. I think he's more like six, two, six, three. Physically. Yeah, that's a typo. I'm sorry. It's, it's all good. We're all, we could all, I, I had to point that out just so I could get on you a little bit. But that's fine. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy it when you do. I enjoy it when you do. So, but Xavier, I'm with, it right now, if it makes you feel I, good. I watched, I watched him in the state title game. Magically, he's now six, three. Man, it's amazing how quickly that works. But Mincy's a big kid. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you got a chance to meet him in person, but he looks a little different than the other guys. He's not a corner. I think he's a safety. He may even be looks like a linebacker. He may be a will linebacker. Um, you know, he's a kid I think could get to two twenty, be a big physical uh, safety linebacker. Uh, you don't really now these guys. You want these guys like this that can transition a linebacker because linebackers are kind of going out unless they can cover and do all the things you want to do against these spread defenses. I think Mincy fits the mold of what you want in a, in a college linebacker now, but he also could do a lot of good things at safety. He's a bigger physical kid. Um, Mainland has not, I, I talk about this. Mainland hasn't been kind of Florida state when it comes to um, players. They did have the Fagans kid a couple of years ago. 
um, and they had Buster Davis. But a, a lot of these kids seem to tend to lean towards Florida uh, when you look at the history of mainland. So I think the Gators are going to be one of the schools that are going to be tough to beat. But right now, you know what? Florida State is a hot team. They continue to win, and the in-state school, the, the Gators start to struggle this year. That allows you to jump in and maybe steal a kid like this. These are the guys they need to add uh, to their defense. They need to continue to add these type of players that are big, long, athletic, and are game changers on that side of the ball. He had, he made his presence felt in the state title game. He's a kid I like a lot. Um, he'd be a, He's another guy that you'd say, man, this would be a great get for the Seminoles. Yep. Uh, his film is impressive. I've seen him on the hoof. He does look the part. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. All right, so our last official visitor for the weekend is defensive tackle prospect Alex January uh, from uh, Duncanville, Texas High School. He is rated as the 21st best defensive tackle prospect in the country by rivals. Uh, he has been to Texas Tech and LSU on official visits. Will also visit Texas and Miami on official visits after Florida State. Uh, Fish, what are your thoughts here? Uh, is it a guy they can get out of the state of Texas? They have recruited Texas Texas a little bit. We've seen some linebackers sign with Florida State out of Texas, including uh, Dylan Brown-Turner, who will be a part of the 2023 football team. But uh, what are your thoughts on Alex? And uh, I know that you think maybe uh, Florida State's got some work to do as far as ultimately having him sign the dotted line. Yeah, I'm not as high on this kid as, you know, uh, rivals is, but you know, I I also haven't seen him in person in the game. See, there's some things you'd like to see in person. He's he's probably going to be more of a run stopper than giving you much of a pass rush from the interior. Um, I think he could be solid against the run. I just don't see the burst off the line of scrimmage. But he is a bigger guy. Is this a guy that eventually moves to the offensive line and ends up a guard? I think that may happen with him because usually when guys are six five they got to have some traits that you're like all right I, I he's he's a bigger d lineman we're gonna he, he has a burst he has the ability to be um a very productive player so it wouldn't shock me to see him end up on the offensive line i i i don't know enough of how much fsu's recruiting him to be honest i haven't seen a lot of traction with this kid i know he took a visit recently uh but it just doesn't seem like a kid that they're going to have a, a great shot at uh, moving forward. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And obviously, they got some other uh, defensive line prospects they're looking at as well. So uh, we'll see uh, we'll see where it goes with Alex January. And of course, we will be back. We will be down there on Sunday trying to grab interviews with as many of these kids as we can to get their reaction to their official visits uh, on Sunday. We will do live updates on the board for the kids that we can get. We'll have video interviews and written interviews at some point after the official visits with, again, as many of these six prospects as we can get. You can go to theosceola.com or floridastate.rivals.com. We will have a live thread going on Sunday. Uh, that should go up probably around 10 a.m. And, uh, uh, we believe with FSU having an individual camp at 1 p.m. on uh, Sunday that most of the prospects will be gone by the time that camp starts. Uh, speaking of defensive tackles, Fish, we do have some sad news to report. Uh, former FSU assistant coach Brad Lawing passed away yesterday. He was uh, – uh, one of the best recruiters in the Southeast. Uh, he was at South Carolina for 17 years. Uh, that's where I worked with him. He was my boss uh, when I worked in the recruiting office at South Carolina as a recruiting graduate assistant. Uh, that was from uh, – he was at two different stints, coach for uh, Sparky Woods, Brad Scott, and then went back and coached for Steve Spurrier at uh, South Carolina and then was with Will Muschamp at Florida, then ultimately here with Jimbo Fisher uh, at Florida State, uh, did you? Uh, you know, Coach Lawrence is one of the great storytellers of all time. I don't know how much time you got to spend around him, Fish, but uh, did you know Brad at all? Yeah, I, I, you know, I got to meet him when he was at Florida State, and um, you know, he was a very good coach. Uh, I believe he coached Clowney and and yep, uh, he did. the other defensive end that's with the Chargers. So he had a lot of success. He did very well at Florida. It's a it's sad. I don't even know what he passed away from, but it, he seemed. He I was, haven't got the details. I, it, he didn't but, seem like an old guy, from what I remember. Like I thought no, he, was, he was sixty three years old, way too young, way too. Yeah, young. So that's sad. Yeah. Um, 
but that someone that young has to. But play. I do, I do know a lot of people that followed Florida State during Jimbo's years are aware of Coach Lawing. So, obviously, our thoughts and prayers are to uh, go out to Miss Lawing, his two kids, and uh, their grandkids. Uh, and of course, uh, I've, I've talked with uh, former Florida State offensive lineman Mark Salva, who worked with Brad at South Carolina. And uh, so, anyway, uh, sorry. Uh, to pass on that bad news, but we do want to let you guys know. Uh, and of course, uh, it was a fun, always great to be around Coach Lawing. Even after my days of working with him, when he seen me at a football camp, he always, as busy as he was, found time to come over and uh, talk to me for five or six minutes. And that's hard to do when you're working at a high school football camp. But uh, anyway, Fish, uh, we'll be back on Monday. Uh, we will have hopefully have some updates. Uh, from the Elite 11, where Luke Cromenhawk is competing. Uh, we're hoping to have either Adam Gorney or John Garcia, who are both out there on the show, either Wednesday, uh, Monday or Wednesday, to kind of tell us how Luke has done and how he stacks up against the other 19 quarterbacks that are out there. We'll see how that we'll see how that goes. Uh, he, went, he went from Elite at the Florida State camp. I mean, he, everybody talked about how great he did, I guess. He had one rough day yesterday, so well, everybody forgot how good he was. As we, as I said, none of that counts because the bullets start flying. There's pads on it. Defensive ends <laughs> flying your way. So oh, man. We'll, we'll take that for what it's worth. But, hey, we do. We want to check in. I mean, we will check in with those guys uh, to see uh, what, their, what their thoughts were. And, obviously, there, I believe this is the last day of the camp, Fish. Is that correct? Yeah, they usually have – it's like two days. Yeah. They used to add – if they've changed it so much they used to have even a um seven on seven portion that was incorporated so that's i don't know yeah they do have receivers and dbs there because i've seen some of those guys posting uh that uh some of the receivers posting their highlights from the camp but yeah uh, we'll we'll have more from on that hopefully uh next week but uh Fish, uh, anything else, uh, any other tidbits for uh, uh, fish bits that we need to know about? Nah, you know, I got to see those four kids from uh, Washington yesterday. They walked in as I was walking out of the Miami camp. Um, those those were f- – that they're good-looking kids, man. So, Well, we'll talk a little bit about, more about them next week. <laughs> but, uh, Fish, I uh, appreciate you joining us. Listen, if you're not an Osceola subscriber and just listen to our podcast slash video cast with Seminole Sidelines, please go to theosceola.com or floridastate.rivals.com. We have premium recruiting message board. We have live threads on these recruiting weekends. You do have to subscribe to access that information. We do have some uh, recruiting information that's in front of the paywall, but check us out if you're interested. Uh, But please go to floridastate.rivals.com or theosceola.com. Check us out and fish. Uh, Man, I hope you have a great Father's Day weekend. Uh, and uh, I got to meet your son, Ethan, this past weekend. I hope he buys you something nice or maybe he's still mad at you about yelling at him uh, uh, during baseball season. We'll find out we'll, we'll find out what kind of gift you get. Hey, I, I, well, it's funny as I took him to the gym two days ago for the first time and he lifted weights and he's in. he's got that pain in his chest. He's like, can't move so yeah, yeah. I, I got a little revenge on him do you, hey do you want by him to grab his armpit <laughs> yes yeah, he's like don't touch me don't touch me <laughs> so i got a little revenge on him yeah well good for you good for yeah. you well fish man have a great weekend uh no for all our subscribers thank you for subscribing uh, subscribing to the osceola and if you're not an osceola subscriber uh please consider us by going to the osceola.com or floridastate.rivals.com and check us out. We'll be back on Monday in some form or fashion, whether it's me and Fish or Bob and Kurt. And, uh, we'll have some news coming out of the official visit weekends for sure. But have a great Father's Day. Uh, take care of your dads if uh, you uh, are celebrating Father's Day with your father. And we will be back uh, next Monday with another edition of the Osceola's Seminole Sidelines.